guys, uh, last video I talked about the starting items you want to be building when you're jungling. Now this video, I want to move a little bit past that and tell you the gods you really should be focused on playing in this meta that we're in right now. Um, this video is coming out right before the patch. The They just announced the patch where there's a new god, uh, Xing Ten, I think, Xing Ten, something like that. He's a guardian. Um, they are just about to slightly nerf Al Quang, but I do believe that these top five junglers that I'm going to mention will remain the same. I don't think any of the changes or nerfs are really going to affect too much in the jungle. I could be wrong, but for right now, this is what I believe. And you really should use these five gods if you want to excel and push yourself and get better. Uh, maybe pick up one or two if you're a new player of these gods and just focus on those. But if you're an experienced player, you are working your way around what gods you really should be focused on now after playing them all. These are the five. They are going to be in order from the best god to the fifth best god. And yeah, that's what it's going to be. So to start off with, it is obvious to me, maybe not obvious to you, Al Quang. Oh, well, he's not an assassin. Al Quang is going to be your best jungler right now. Even after these nerfs that are coming in, these, these, these nerfs that are really slight... I think Al Quang will be the best. You build Al Quang as a mage. And this will allow for you to be in and out of a fight. You don't have to just all in and auto attack him down with your junglers or your junglers with your dragons. You really play Al Quang to burst and get kills or just burst and poke and get out. So what I'm saying is say you blink in, you pop your two, you three somebody. And then you throw your two at them, and then you walk away. Like, it's nothing. Like, oh, I did half their health, not a big deal. Right? Like, half your health, not a big deal. So you'll do that. You'll play the outskirts of a fight or the outskirts of whatever you're doing, and then you'll go back in when your ability is about to come back up. That's really what you should be looking to do. If you're in a situation where you know you can kill somebody, then just all in them. You blink in, you walk up, you two, you three, all them down maybe, throw your two maybe, and then all, and they're dead. That's really how the god should be played. That's why he's the best right now, is because he's very safe if you play like that. And now we'll talk about the build a little bit. Uh, last video, if you haven't seen it, I explained starter builds. These do apply to Al Quang. You can go either start you want. And yeah, I mean, watch that video. It'll explain a lot. It's pretty simple. Now we'll move on to the build. You want to start with Shoes of the Magi. Power, penetration, good, always. You know, like there's no, you can't really go wrong. You don't need CDR, it's irrelevant when in the boot sense because you get so much damage from shoes of the magi now you do want cdr when you go for your first life skill item pythag's piece very very strong item you sacrifice 10 power not that much power for 15 percent cdr as you can see or sorry 10 percent cdr 15 percent lifesteal the lifesteal from the aura and the magic power from the aura do affect you so you're essentially getting 90 physical or 90 magic power you're getting the 25% lifesteal, 10% CDR. Yeah, it's 10%, it's a weird number, whatever, who cares? It's the only CDR you're getting, it's awesome, it helps a little bit. Uh, those times when you get that kill because your ability just came back up, remember it's because you got Pythag's piece. Next item you're going, Polynomicon. The passive on this item is very, very strong. Um, the fact that it's an extra boost on your burst is kind of the big deal. It's... Not necessarily, yeah, it procs in an awesome way. Your dragons can proc it, whatever, I, I believe. Unless unless something changed. I haven't played Alquang in forever. So don't quote me on this because it, it really isn't that important. But when I was playing Alquang a lot, the dragons could proc it on that, that auto attack. That extra damage would go off of your dragon hitting them. If not, realistically, you're going to get an auto attack off 90% of the time. So who cares? Whatever. Doesn't matter. Just don't worry about it. It's a lot of extra burst, especially when you're going in for that all-in, I'm going to kill you and then I'm going to ult you type of fight and that's really where it excels the extra life steals awesome the extra mana is actually really awesome uh you can go you can be you can you can be a mana problems a lot on our going early it just it just happens it's how it is next item spear the magus you're going for the penetration the fact that your dragons and your three are well your three is on such a short cooldown your dragons are hitting them it makes the stacks go up really fast and the item is really good nothing more to say about that now we move on to soul reaver Back to the whole, I'm going to burst you down and insta-kill you type thing with my ult. Soul Reaver helps that. It's an extra 300 to 500 damage depending on who you're on. That's insane. That's awesome. If you're looking to insta-kill somebody, which is what you're looking to do, this is the item to get. Last item, Rod of Tahuti. 
extra damage makes you hit harder pretty standard you don't need defense if you play out quang as an in and out type god you do not want to all in somebody you do not just want to run at them and be in the middle of five people because you will die you are basically a glass cannon it's how the god works get used to it just just get used to it it's that simple next god will be sir ket sir ket is our number two on the list now we saw fall of sir ket in the previous splits Hog was still being bought in the previous splits. Sirke was still good, just wasn't. She just wasn't being played. There's nothing more to say. She was still good. Occasionally she'd pop up. She just now she is amazing. Why is she amazing? Blink. If you're getting blink, which you should be on like 99% of your junglers, she is broken. You can blink into a fight. You can two, which is your Cobra's little Cobra's kiss. The two is your Cobra's Kiss. It's a taunt that will pull them towards you or throw them, not really throw them, push them towards their own team. If you use it properly, you'll blink in, you'll two, they'll walk at you. You will one them, you will ult them, which throw them towards your team, out of your ult. Auto them once, they're probably dead. If you had a teammate there or they weren't full health, they're definitely dead. God is broken. The mobility you get with blink, being able to start a fight, and then having your other abilities up to just run around and get out of a team fight if you really need to, on top of beads, broken. You can't die unless you're all inning. If you're really just looking to live, you really should never die on circuit. Ever. Unless your beads are down. Or you dash into a wall like I once did in a competitive game. You know, shit happens, whatever. And we will move on to the build. Like I said, starter item. Go watch my starter item video. You want warrior tabby for max damage in the early part. You don't need attack speed. You're not an auto attack god. Yotens to use your abilities as much as possible. Gives you a lot of CDR. Gives you pen useful your one can crit that's why you're going deathbringer deathbringer is the best you do not want to go rage you don't auto attack very often you want deathbringer for the burst crit on your one then you want to go spirit rope you will be in situations where you get hit by some damage you're always in the fight that's just how the god works when you're on top of someone's head you can get focused so spirit rope is very good for this it also adds to your offensive ability you get that protections, but you also get the CDR. You max out on CDR, your abilities are up every 5 seconds. It's ridiculous. It's like you always have something to do. It's crazy. After Spirit Robe, you're going Malice, which will help with your crits, the burst of your crits. Your auto attacks, You, like I said, you aren't auto attacking very much, but you do auto out to get your poison passive off. Usually, your auto is going to crit. You have 40% chance crit. It crits a lot more than you really think about it. So that extra damage from the bleed is nice it's on top of your poison ticking. It's it's broken the build is very very strong titans being to round it out to get extra penetration get some extra power you're good to go you're not a tank in this build obviously don't sit in front of all the damage you're fine next got on the list no surprise Bologna. she's still broken they nerfed her alt a little bit sorry i shouldn't be going to the build yet they nerfed her alt a little bit doesn't matter oh i'm sorry guys i need a drink i'm like half sick but not really sick Anyway, Bologna's still broken. Alt on a longer cooldown. Who cares? Your one doesn't slow as much early. Who cares? Your bludgeon still does a ton of, da ton of damage. You still have a disarm for the hunters. God is very, very strong. She has a lot of control. Play her. Build. Pretty straightforward. I have changed my build a little bit because we aren't in that double hunter meta anymore. I go warrior tabby for damage. Your bludgeon hits super hard. I go into Frostbound Hammer for the control and the life. You're frontlining a lot early, so you want health. You don't really need defense. A little bit more damage helps. The sustain you get from your autos and being able to slow somebody in a team fight and the control you get from that is extremely strong. Then you want to move into Executioner, get the extra damage, get the penetration, get the attack speed, everything that helps Bologna do damage. Then you're moving into Tanky, Midguardian Mail, Physical Defense. Most gods are physical now. We'll see some team comps that are a lot of magical. In that sense, you can switch up that mid-guardian to any magical defense item you want. It'll be just as good. But you really want to base the item you're getting off the amount of damage the other team has. If they have a mid who's a mage and a support who is magic damage, and that's all their magic damage, go with mid-guardian mail, and you'll be safe and good because the health, the double health item is OP. After mid-guardian mail, you still want to get a little bit tankier. Spirit robe. It, like I said when I was talking about Sir Ket, Spirit Robe adds to the tankiness of somebody, but also the offensive ability. Your cooldown's on the shoulder cooldown. You can spam a little bit more, and that's very helpful. I finish off the build now with Kinsize. This build can change, and she'd still be strong. You do not have to go this exact build every time. Sometimes you're, you get ahead, you want to be a little bit more aggressive. Maybe you build Itch of All instead of a Spirit Robe or a Midgardian Mail. It's 
up to you. Do what you want. But the fact that tanky gods are so strong and prominent in this this meta or the split, the last couple splits actually, Kins is super strong. It kills mages. Well, people don't realize it. It really does still do a lot of damage to mages. But it, that sustain you have on a tank, just whacking them down for 4% of their health every auto with such fast attack speed is nasty. You really do need someone who can control the tanks at some point in the game and say you initiate into a fight on the mages, which they slow you. They, they, for some reason, you can't stick on them. They, they combat blink out. Whatever. Turn on the tanks. You will still kill them. This build is very, very good for whatever situation you're in. Sure, some things can vary. Use your head when you're building, and I'm sure you can figure it out. It's not too difficult. But stick with something similar to this build, and you will control and do a lot of damage in all aspects of a game. Beginning to middle to late, whatever. It's very, very strong. Next god we're moving to, one of my least favorite gods to play, but one of the strongest team fighting gods in the jungle, Humbats. Humbats has always been good. He's never been, oh my gosh, so great, it's crazy, but he's always been right there in the middle where you can pick him and be safe, or you can play against him and not be too scared, you know? So it's really your choice on what you want to do. Oh, sorry, I got an alarm going off. Um, it's your choice on what you want to do with Humbats, whether you pick it early or late, who you want to play it against. It's... Not too many counter matchups, not too scary, but very good in controlling teams. Now, the build still hasn't changed since the last million times I've built on him. It's just like building on Sir Cat. It's actually the exact same build. This is a more damagey build. You can drop some items. I'll talk about that in a second. So, we're going into Warrior Tabby Boots. You're getting physical damage. You're not an auto attack god. Jotuns, more alts, more use of abilities, penetration, very, very strong. Deathbringer, you get crit. Uh, from your passive so every time you use an ability you get crit after so I throw out a two and then I auto them that auto has 30% chance to crit I believe maybe 25 I always forget the numbers so that passive on top of 20% crit from Deathbringer putting you somewhere around 50 close if not over then your crit damage does extra damage you also get 50, 50 physical power the Deathbringer just kinda screams humbats it's an awesome item and it's something you really want to rush. It does take a little while to get Deathbringer online if you're not just farming and destroying the other team. But once you get it online, the spike is huge. You can go from critting for 300 or whatever, or critting occasionally for like 300, to critting for 500 and doing half of an Agni's health, whatever. Spirit Robe is your next item. Tanky and offensive in one item. Very, very good. I've always liked this item. Sometimes I don't wasn't building it for a while, but I'm really back to loving Spirit Robe. Malice. Now this is for an aggressive build. This is where they, I don't know, you're ahead or you just, you're okay in team fights for some reason they're not focusing you, you're able to do what you want. Go Malice. It adds to that crit. Your crits do bleed damage, has more power. Very strong item. Then move on to Titan's Bane. You get penetration and power. Obviously good in the kit. Now if you need to build tanky, you can drop Malice. You don't need it. It's not like a necessary item. It is very, very good. It's not, it's not the, the most serious uh, item in your build. Here, you can change things up. If you are getting focused, it's the same as Bologna. Build a mid guardian male, build some tanky item, build runeforge if you want. I really don't like runeforge, so I don't recommend it. I'd say go mid guardian male or any tanky item you really need. If you want void shield, that's what you're going for, go for it. But I think health and physical defense is the strongest item you can go for. Build a mid guardian male here, finish with penetration, you're good to go, you're solid. You're damaging, you're tanky, you got everything in one, you have a lot of control with your abilities, go for it. Now, the last god on this list changes for me from split to split. I've never liked this god, mainly because I know how to counter it personally. But in actuality, Thor does very, very well for most players. You can control a game. The god does a lot of damage early and mid, and even late if you're ahead. Most people don't know how to beat it. They don't know how to play the proper gods like Thanatos uh, that counter it, or they don't know why Bologna can actually do well against Thor. There's a lot of things and variables that people don't consider when playing against Thor, and that makes Thor that much better. I personally don't play Thor all the time. I play Thor every now and then because he does do a lot of damage. But, and that's what I like about him. But he also has that control aspect, and that's what most of the competitor, competitive players really enjoy about Thor. Now, the build you're going on Thor, once again, it's changed a little bit because uh, I don't get uh, Magi's anymore. Magi's is still good. If you need Magi's, buy it. It's not a bad item. 
But I personally can get away with beads and spirit rope. So the build is warrior tabby, power. You don't attack very you don't auto attack very often. Jotuns, more alts, more hammer throws, more spins, more stuns, everything's good. Spirit robe adds to the tanky early because you spike so much with Jotuns, you do not need another damage item right after Jotuns. Go tanky, sustain in those team fights, make them use abilities on you and still live through it because you're a tanky Thor with a ton of control, but also have the extra CDR to CDR sorry about that. CDR, I mean uh, cooldown reduction to stun as much as you want. Throw hammers as much as you want, spin as much as you want. The extra CDR is never, ever a bad thing. Now, like I said, this god is not auto attack god. Go for penetration and physical power. Brawler's beat stick is very, very strong. You're going to hit hard with your hammers, which is burst damage, and can't go wrong with Brawler's speed stick. If there's any healers on the other team, it's that much better, especially with Weakening Curse getting nerfed. Remember, Weakening Curse dropped from 100% healing reduction to 65%. That's huge. That means with this Brawlers, you'll be over 100%. You'll hit that 100% that healing reduction still. You need to have another item. So if there's any healers, look for Brawlers Beat Stick. Awesome item. Mid Guardian Mail. You get tanky, you get health. Can't go wrong with that on a god like Thor who's controlling team fights. Finally, it ends with Titan's Bane. Just more penetration, more damage. Your ability based, so your abilities are hitting that much harder. Builds very straightforward. Little things vary from split to split for me on most gods. This god did change a teeny bit, but... Try this build, let me know how it goes. I'm sure it'll be great. That being said, those are the top five. Still look to play Athena in the jungle. Athena's probably on that Thor level where you can control, you have early burst, your mobility is high with the global alt. Athena's still very strong. There are some other gods that kind that maybe could have made it in the top five, but this is the five for sure that I say play them. You will do well if you're building correctly and you learn how to play these gods. Just like every other video. Leave comments about the gods, any arguments you have, any questions you have, anything you just want to say, and yeah, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I love you guys. You all are awesome. I hope this helps. See you next video. Oh, this you crazy mother...